I would like to start off today by first asking you to close your eyes. Now imagine yourself deep in outer space. You are thousands of light years away from here. You're in a place where time runs in slow motion. So you see galaxies merging and stars exploding as though the rest of the universe is running in fast forward. You're in a place where gravitational forces are so strong that even the tiniest of the human cells are stretched and shredded into pieces. You can open your eyes now. What I described to you are just a few of the many bizarre and fascinating things that happen near a black hole. My name is Dheeraj Pacham. I'm an astronomer at MIT where I hunt black holes. And today I will tell you how we astronomers find black holes. A black hole is a region in space inside which gravity is so extreme that nothing can get out, not even light. The imaginary outer boundary of this region is known as the event horizon. Conceptually, you can understand what a black hole is by thinking about Earth's gravity. Earth's gravity is what is holding each one of you to your chairs right now. But imagine putting on a jetpack and launching yourself vertically upwards at 40,000 kilometers per hour. With that kind of speed, you will be able to escape Earth's gravity and venture out deep into space as far as you want. Any slower than this, you'll either fall back down to Earth or get trapped in an orbit around Earth. Now let's compress Earth by a factor of 10,000 by keeping the mass same. Earth is now roughly one kilometer in diameter. The gravity at the surface of this Earth is now 100 million times stronger than before. In order to get off this Earth, you have to launch yourself at 4 million kilometers per hour. That's a factor of 100 times faster than before. Now let's take this a step further and compress Earth down to the size of the metal ball that is being passed around, only one centimeter in diameter. Earth is now the size of a typical blueberry. The gravity inside this blueberry-sized Earth is so strong that it will get crushed into a point of infinite density, surrounded by a one-centimeter event horizon. In other words, Earth will turn into a black hole. In order to get off this Earth, you would have to launch yourself at greater than the speed of light. But that is not possible, because Einstein's theory of relativity tells us that nothing can move faster than the speed of light. So that means you're stuck. No matter what you do, you will not be able to get off this blueberry sizer. But lucky you, there is no natural process that can crush Earth into such a compact size. So objects that only weigh as much as the Earth will never turn into black holes. For that matter, our Sun, which is 2,000 billion, billion, billion kilos, that is 2 followed by 30 zeros, is also not heavy enough to turn into a black hole. Only stars heavier than 25 times the mass of our sun can turn into black holes. Only in these stars will gravity eventually become strong enough that it will take over every force of nature and compel the star to crush itself into a black hole. The kind of black holes that I will talk about today are the ones that are formed when the most overweight stars grow old and die in spectacular explosions known as supernovae. These explosions expel huge fractions of their initial mass and after thousands of years produce beautiful remnants like the one shown here. There's a black hole sitting at the center of this remnant that you cannot see. It is estimated that there are millions of overweight stars just in our galaxy alone. And thus, by extension, you expect there to be millions of black holes lurking in our Milky Way galaxy. So now we know what a black hole is and how they form. So what I'm about to say might come to you as a surprise. From the outside, astrophysical black holes are actually the simplest objects created in the universe. While the physics of what happens inside the event horizon of a black hole is highly debated, and the equations of motion surrounding a black hole are very complex, Black holes only have two observable properties, mass and spin. 
this is very different from, say, even learning about a person. People are complex. A person has many observable properties, like height, weight, eye color, hair color, size of the ear, etc., etc. And to complicate things further, some of them even have a personality to observe. But black holes are simple. Once you know the mass and spin of a black hole, you know everything there is to know about that black hole. Leonardo da Vinci once famously said, simplicity is the ultimate sophistication. When it comes to black holes, this is absolutely true. So these simple and yet mind-boggling objects are all over our galaxy. In the last five minutes since I started talking, hundreds of black holes have formed somewhere in the universe. How do we find them? All we know from Einstein's equations is that black holes must be heavy and compact, very small in size. But by definition, they are dark, because light can't get out of them. So does this mean we cannot find black holes? Not at all. Just like how, at a puppet show, the movement of puppets is telling us there must be a puppet master pulling them with strings, when it comes to hunting for black holes, we infer their presence by studying the influence of their gravity on stars near them. It's true that black holes that live by themselves are very difficult to find. All the black holes that we know of currently, excluding the most recent gravitational wave sections, are the ones that have a companion star. A star that is going around the black hole. A star that we can see with the telescope. It's like if you're a black hole, you won't get noticed unless you have a boyfriend or a girlfriend who's bright. <laughs> the typical picture we have of a black hole with a companion is something like this. We cannot see the black hole that's at the center, but we can see the companion star. By tracking the motion of the companion star, we can measure precisely what the mass of the black hole is. The physical principle we use to track the motion of the star is something that you may have experienced many times in your daily lives. It's known as Doppler effect. For example, an ambulance that is coming towards you has a higher pitch because the sound waves are getting compressed. The same ambulance, as it moves away from you, the sound waves are getting stretched, so the pitch decreases. In real life, this sounds something like this. The same thing happens with light waves. When an object that is emitting light is coming towards you, the light waves from that object are getting compressed to a shorter wavelength. But as the object is moving away from you, the light waves get stretched to a longer wavelength. This is precisely what astronomers do. We track the wavelength of the star's light as it is going around the black hole. What we see is on the top left of the illustration. That's the wavelength of the star. By tracking the wavelength of the star at different times, we can measure precisely how fast the star is moving at those times. Using such measurements, astronomers have found over two dozen dark objects weighing between five and 15 times the mass of our sun. But just knowing that these objects are heavy and dark is not enough to conclude that they're black holes. Because remember, Einstein's equations tell us that black holes must also be compact, small in size. So this next big piece of puzzle about the compactness came from studying these objects in the X-rays. Light is made up of electromagnetic waves, all the way from the longest, most stretched radio waves to the shortest wavelength gamma rays. Human eye is sensitive to only a small fraction of these wavelengths, known as the visible wavelength. Every object and its light. The temperature of the object dictates at what wavelength the light comes out. For example, an average human body has a temperature of 37 degrees Celsius. Hence, most of us emit our light in the infrared. Here's an image of two people observed at infrared wavelengths. Now, sun, on the other hand, has a surface temperature of 6,000 degrees Celsius. Hence, most of its light comes out in the visible wavelength. Now, material that is millions of degrees Celsius will emit X-rays. Picture yourself as a hungry black hole sitting right next to a star full of yummy gas. 
You're not just going to sit there and do nothing. When you have the opportunity, you will strike. You will start pulling the material onto yourself. A parcel of gas that is just about to leave the surface of the star is only a few thousand degrees Celsius. But as it is falling onto the black hole, it is losing its gravitational energy. And because energy is conserved, a fraction of it gets converted to heat. So by the time a parcel of gas reaches the event horizon of the black hole, it gets heated up to 10 million degrees Celsius. Now stuff that is so hot will emit X-rays. In reality, however, black holes are not so polite. They don't pull one tiny snack at a time. For reasons we don't fully understand yet, every couple of years or so, black holes tend to go on an eating spree, where they pull huge amounts of material onto themselves for months, sometimes even years. And when this happens, the hot gas that is just about to fall into the black hole sends us a distress signal in the form of X-rays. By putting on our X-ray vision goggles and looking up into the sky, we can see such actively feeding black holes. This is also how astronomers know where to look in the sky for black holes. In practice, however, we do this more systematically. We have X-ray space telescopes, like the one shown here, that scan the entire sky in regular intervals and find actively feeding black holes. The motion of material near a black hole is just like a drain. Once the water reaches the edge of the drain, you never see it again. This is a footage of a drain in a lake in Texas. You can imagine, uh, so right now we do not have the technology to take high-resolution images of material falling into a black hole. But this video perfectly emulates that process. You can imagine the the drain itself as the black hole, while the water that is falling in is similar to gas falling into a black hole. What we see in X-rays is the light from the hot material just about to fall into the black hole. What we see in X-rays is really the last few orbits of the material just before it spirals into the black hole. We can track the motion of this material by tracking the X-ray light changes. This allows us to measure how compact the object is. Some of these objects have been found to be just a few hundred kilometers. That's remarkably tiny, because what this is telling us is that in these objects, more than three million Earths are packed into a region smaller than the size of Austria. That is ridiculously tiny. In fact, these... <laughs> In fact, these sizes are very close to what is predicted for black holes from Einstein's theory of relativity. And thus, it is very likely that these dark, heavy, and obviously compact objects are indeed Einstein's black holes. So there you have it. Finding a black hole is a two-step process. First, you identify the companion star, you track its motion in the visible wavelength. This gives you the mass of the black hole. Second, you measure its compactness in the X-rays. So now you know how to find black holes. <laughs> Let me finish by briefly talking about what's next in black hole research. The very fact that we can see material from so close to the event horizon of the black hole is truly phenomenal. The region close to the event horizon is really where the magic of Einstein's equations come into play. This is where the weird stuff happens. The phenomena I described at the beginning of the talk, like, for example, time slowing down, happens right here. By studying the X-rays that come out of here, we can learn how matter behaves right next to a black hole. In the last few decades, astronomers have detected thousands of mysterious patterns in the X-ray light from black holes. When some of them are converted to audio, they sound something like this. Studying these signals has the potential to teach us about the extreme environments just outside the event horizons of black holes. In the next decade, with bigger and more sensitive telescopes, a major goal is to try to interpret this enigmatic music of black holes. Thank you. <laughs>